Today's video is entitled The Atwood Machine, also known as The Elevator and Newton's Second Law. And before you get started, please don't forget to subscribe to my channel, Step by Step Science, get all my excellent physics, chemistry, and math videos. I've made some additional videos for Newton's Second Law, which you can link to in the upper right hand corner of this video. But for this video, we are going to talk about the Atwood machine and we're going to be calculating the acceleration of the two masses and the tension in the cable. So the problem is we have a 12 kilogram mass, which we're going to designate as mass number one. And it is attached to a 16 kilogram mass, which we're going to designate as M2. And they're attached by a cable, a non-elastic cable. And both of those masses hang off of a frictionless pulley. And like I said, we want to calculate the acceleration of the two masses and the tension in the cable. Now, I'm going to go through this step by step. And I think I have six steps. We're going to drive the equation, show you how to calculate acceleration, and how to calculate the tension in the string. Now, the first thing I think you should do when you're given a problem like this is, of course, to draw a diagram, which is going to include the mass of the pulley and the cable that's attached to the mass. So we have a pulley, and we have the masses, and we have the cable just like that. That's all you got to do. Now, for step number two, we want to determine the direction of location because we're going to have some forces that we're going to be dealing with and we have to make sure we have them labeled as either positive or negative negative. and normally what we do is we have one mass which is 12 kilograms we have a larger mass which is 16 kilograms so therefore this object this atwood machine these two masses are going to rotate in this direction the pulley is going to be rotating in the clockwise direction and we're going to designate that as the positive direction. Now that means M1 is going to be going up and we're going to call that positive and M2 is going down and we're going to call that positive. Now we kind of have two sides to this apparatus. It seems maybe a little weird for one is up as positive and for the other one down as positive. But we're designating the direction of motion of the pulley and of the two masses as positive. So M1 up is positive and for M2 down is positive because the whole thing is kind of rotating in this counterclockwise direction. And the direction of those masses is consistent with the designation of the positive direction for the pulley. Okay, so we then designated the direction of the pulley and the direction of the masses as positive. And now we're going to draw the free body diagram for each of those masses because we're going to be applying Newton's second law. We have to add up all the masses and all the forces to get our equation for the acceleration. So we are going to draw the free body diagram for M1. Now each of these has two forces. That's the gravitational force, force of gravity, Fg, and then the force of tension in the string or in the cable. And you make sure you designate that as Ft1 and Fg1 because the masses are different. Okay, so you got to make sure you keep the ones and the twos separate from each other. And the free body diagram for mass number two looks basically the same. We have the force of gravity acting on mass number two. And we have the tension in the cable. The tension pulls up and the force of gravity pulls down. Okay, so that's the free body diagram. That is step number three. We're already on number three. Now we're going to go on to step four and we're going to apply Newton's second law, F equals MA, because that's the equation that we are going to use to calculate the acceleration. So we have F equals MA, it's Newton's second law. We're going to rearrange that for the acceleration because we want to solve for the acceleration first. And this is actually F net. So I put F net here just to be clear. And this is M. The mass, it's actually the sum of the masses, but we usually don't write mass net or sum of the masses. Okay, so now we can do that and we can apply that to this situation. We're going to add up all the forces. Okay, and we have four forces, one, two, three, four. And we're going to start with M1. We'll start with the positive, that FT1, the tension force is in the positive direction, so that's positive. And then we're going to subtract from that or have minus Fg1 because that's pulling in the negative direction. Remember over here, up is positive and down is negative. Now it's kind of the opposite on the other side. We have Fg2, which is positive, and Ft2, which is minus. All right. And then we're going to add up the two masses. We have M1 and M2 like that. Now, we can simplify this equation just a bit because we said that that is an string that is a non-elastic string and therefore you need to understand or you need to remember that the force of tension in the string is equal throughout the entire string 
and you'll notice that one of them is positive and one of them is negative. So according to Newton's third law, they have an opposite but equal reaction. So the magnitude of those two forces, even though we don't know what they are, we're going to calculate them, but we can say that the magnitude is the same, but the direction is in the opposite direction of each other, and therefore we have one tension force which is positive, and we have another tension force which is negative, and if we add those two up with the understanding that the amount of force, the magnitude of the force is the same, then they'll cancel each other out. So we can actually cancel FT1 and FT2. We will come back and calculate those, but first we're gonna go on and calculate the acceleration. Now I'm going to write down the equation for the acceleration, having canceled FT1 and FT2. Now you'll notice here that this is positive and this is negative, so I'm gonna move this to the front and this behind, because I'm just adding them up. So I have FG2, which is positive, and minus FG1, which is negative, and now I'm going to divide by the two masses. Now that is the equation for the acceleration. Now I just want to point out that it should make a little bit of sense because we are basically taking the gravitational force of two, which is falling down this way, but it's not actually experiencing free fall because you'll notice that this is minus FG1 and that basically means that FG1, the gravitational force from number one, is pulling in the opposite direction. It's this weight minus the force applied, this force minus FG1. So that's why the negative sign is there. So you should realize that. Now, usually in these problems, and in this problem, we're given the masses. We're not given the forces. Of course, you can calculate the forces using Newton's second law, again, which says that the weight or the gravitational force is simply m times the acceleration due to gravity. So usually we don't leave this equation like this. We leave it like this. You can see this is FG2, which is M2G right there, minus this is FG1, and this is M1G. You got to keep the twos and the ones, the mass one and mass two, separate from each other. And then we're just going to divide by the sum of the masses again. So really, if you think about it, all three of these, or how many we have here, all five of these equations are kind of the same thing. But this is the form, I would say, that you should remember that we use to calculate the acceleration. Okay. All right. Now we can actually go through and plug the values in and actually calculate the acceleration. We were given the masses. We know G is 9.81. We've given the masses, so we can just plug the values in. The acceleration is simply M2G, which is 16 times 9.81, minus, don't forget the minus, M1G, which is 12 times 9.81 divided by the sum of the two masses. And if you do all of that, you will get, or you should get, if you don't forget the minus sign, and you have to add these two together before you divide, you should get an acceleration for those two masses as 1.4 meters per second squared. And please remember, they're moving together, because it's an inelastic string, over the massless frictionless pulley, and therefore they have the same acceleration. Okay, we only have one acceleration, but we have two different masses, but they're moving together. All right, that was step number five to solve for the acceleration, and now we can go through and solve for the tension in the cable. Now, for this, we have to kind of go back a little bit, and it says that we're going to do that, solve for the tension of the cable. We're going to apply Newton's second law to just one of the masses, and it doesn't matter which one. We're actually going to do both to calculate the tension. Remember, Newton's second law is F equals MA. So we're gonna add up the two forces. We're gonna do this first for M1. We're gonna add up the two forces, FT1 minus FG1, and we're gonna set that equal to the mass, which is the mass of one times the acceleration. So this is again Newton's second law. The sum of the forces is equal to the mass times the acceleration. Now, we want to solve for FT1, which means we have to move FG1 to the other side, which in this case, because this is minus, we're going to add FG1 to both sides of that equation. That means when we solve for FT1, we get M1A, which is this M1A, plus FG1. Now, once again, we know that FG is equal to MG, and we're given the mass, so we're going to first plug this value in here, substitute. So that means that the force of tension, number one, is equal to M1A plus M1G. That's M1 times G. 
Now we're just going to plug the values in, I believe. Oh, I'm just going to point out this is the equation we use to calculate the tension. Now we're going to plug the values in. We see we have M1A, so this is M1 is 12. The acceleration is 1.4. We calculated that on the previous slide. Plus, now make sure it's M1 again times G. Remember, G is 9.81. If you do each part of that, you should get 16.8 plus 117.72, and you should get just about 135, something like 134 point something. You round to 135. That means this tension is the tension in this string over here in this part of the cable is 135 newtons. As we said, Newton's third law equal but opposite. This is going to be the same value, but let's just check it and do the same thing for the other side. We're going to add up all the forces, set it equal to ma, Newton's second law again. So it's fg2. Now I put fg2 as plus, so I put it in the front. Ft is minus Ft because it pulls in the negative direction. This is positive. This is negative on the right-hand side. Now, once again, we want to solve for Ft2. Now, the first thing we're going to do is move Fg2 to the other side. And to do that, we're going to subtract. Okay, now don't forget you have this negative sign. So it's not Ft2. It's minus Ft2 equals M2a, which is this M2a, minus this value. Now, we don't want minus Ft2. We want Ft2. Now, how are we going to do that to get rid of this negative sign? Basically, what we do is we multiply each of the three terms times minus 1. And when we multiply each of the three terms times minus 1, all we're really doing is we're changing the sign. So you just simply change the sign. So we have Ft2. Now, this is negative, so it becomes positive, so I put it in the front. This is positive, so I make it negative, so I put it in the back. Now, you don't really have to change the sign. I could have minus mt2 plus fg2. I could have minus m2a uh, in the front and then um, the plus fg2 in the back. But usually we like to have it where the term in the front is positive. Okay, so now we have it all solved for ft2. And I can just plug the values in. I'm going to once again substitute in for m. Fg2, I'm going to substitute M2G because we're given the masses. Okay, you can always calculate this separate and then plug it in here, but I like to do it like that. And then this is the equation we would use to calculate the tension on the other side. And we just plug the values in because this is M2G, 16 times 9.81, minus M2A, which is 16 times 140, 1, 40. And if you do that, you remember this is 157. If you don't remember, but you'll get 157. Remember, this is negative. You have to subtract 22.4. And once again, you get something just about 135 newtons. So there you go. That is how you can solve that problem for the Atwood machine or the elevator or a system with two masses on the pulley like that. And I showed you the steps to go through for kind of deriving the equation, for drawing the diagram, the free body diagrams, how to add up the forces, how to calculate the acceleration, and how to get the tension in the cable that's connecting those two masses. So there you go. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you found the video helpful. If you did, please do all of the following four things. Subscribe to my channel. Get all my excellent physics, chemistry, and math videos. Click on the notifications bell. That's, that's one thing. The second thing is give me a thumbs up. The third thing is leave me a nice positive comment in the comment. I always appreciate when people leave comments. Let me know how the video went for you. And then don't forget sharing is caring. You can share this video with all of your friends and show them just how much you care. Thank you very much. We'll see you in the next video.